Before I turn it over to our youth hosts and Del Rey, I just have a few quick housekeeping items to mention, which are, please be sure to keep your microphones on mute throughout the presentation today. Del Rey will be showing us some of her artwork and doesn't mind if you have questions for her while she's showing us her art. Uh, if you do have a question, please type it in the chat box and we'll do our best to ask Del Rey your question. And secondly, for best viewing of our presentation today, it's recommended that you use speaker view instead of gallery view if you're using a computer so that you can see the art better. On your computer, there should be an icon at the top right corner of your screen with viewing options. So thank you and Migwitch. Uh, now that these housekeeping items are done, I'm gonna turn it over to Karen who will open our presentation today with a land acknowledgement. Thanks, Karen. I would like to acknowledge lands we on which we reside, work, and learn as traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Atawandron, and Anishinaabe. As residents of this land, we must acknowledge and honor its history, as well as the injustices taken or taking place towards Indigenous communities in the past and present. It is imperative we do so, because while many institutions recognize and teach about the immoral acts inflicted on Indigenous culture, it is often talked about in the past tense and fails to recognize modern day struggles. We have to change this by continuing to educate ourselves and raising awareness to keep the conversations and actions going. As an immigrant, I'm very grateful to be able to live in Canada and it is important to, for me to respect this heritage. I believe our working dedication can raise awareness and take one step forward in reconciliation. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Karen, for opening us off. Now, I'd just like to turn it over to Michelle, just Michelle Dittmer, just for a few minutes. I think you have a few, um, a few words for the youth before we uh, move on. Amazing. Thank you. Um, my orange shirt got the chocolate frosting all over it. We made the cupcakes today uh, with my little ones. So I'm, I, I lost my orange shirt uh, to the washing machine, but it was there. Um, just wanted to pop on and say hello to everyone. Um, and let you guys know that my schedule has shifted now that school has started up again. And um, I'm no longer going to be able to join you in your weekly meetings uh, because I've got little ones I got to pick up at school um, at this time. So, well my, well, my heart breaks because I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with you guys uh, every week. Um, I know that everybody's schedules are shifting and changing and um, I am with you guys in spirit and um, I'm continuing to cheer you on from the sidelines and I'm always available if anybody ever wants to have a conversation. Um, we can do it offline, we can do it, um, we can jump on our own Zoom call, but uh, as for the 3.30 meetings, uh, they don't work with my schedule. Uh, for the time being. So I am forever supporting you. I will continue to share your work through my social channels. And I just wanted to say that I believe so strongly in the work that you're doing and I'm impressed week over week. And I will be following very closely with all of the developments of your projects. And if you ever need any support in any way, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And here comes my little one running. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. I, we totally understand. Um, yeah, just right now, our oh, I love her orange shirt. Um, yeah, our meetings happen to be at 3.30, but we'll definitely let you know if that shifts to a time that is most convenient for you. But thank you so much for all of the help you've uh, done for community builders and for our youth. And I'm sure that there are ways that you can get involved asynchronously. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa now, who's going to do our intro. Hi, uh, my name is Melissa, and I'm now just going to give a, a brief intro to this uh, workshop. So starting this summer, our Health and Youth Initiative Community Builders Virtual Youth Volunteer Team has been focusing on the topic of Indigenous Truth and Reconciliation. And as part of our Truth and Reconciliation journey, the Health and Youth Initiative is learning and understanding the truth behind colonization, land claims, and residential schools. Well, we have a group that is working uh, um, podcast to spread awareness, a group that is focusing on all the events, and a group that is taking a comprehensive step towards Indigenous art and culture. Well, we believe it's very crucial to express youth perspectives to spread the words that the new generation is not, uh, is not ignore ignoring these historic issues. And our goal here is to share our newfound knowledge and let the Indigenous community know that we value their history, their language, and culture, and are stepping up as allies. 
And that's why we have invited our indigenous artist, Delry Dumont here to today to host a workshop on her art techniques, as well as the inspirations and stories behind her artworks. And we are really so honored to have you here with us today, Delry. And now I'm going to turn it over to Megan, who will talk a little bit more about Delry. Hi, my name is Megan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Delray right now, as Melissa said. So Delray Dumont is an international professional Cree artist from British Columbia, Canada. Dumont was born in Chilliwack, British Columbia, and is a member of Onion Lake Cree Nation, located north of Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. Prior to working as a full-time artist, in 2014, Dumont was employed in Alberta's oil and gas industry for 32 years. During that time, she promoted the beauty of her culture and traditions for the corporate environment. In 2014, she began her artistic journey by opening her own store and art gallery called Duray's Del Rey's Native Art Gallery in Didsbury, Alberta, Canada. She closed in June 2018 due to her husband's passing in May 2018. Dumont completed her art therapy program at the Prairie Institute of Expressive Arts Therapy Level 1 in July 2020. Dumont's early work was in the realist style. She changed her style in 2014, and her more recent work is primarily in the style of pointillism. Her primary medium is acrylic, but some of her earlier works also include oil and watercolor paintings. Much of her artistic work draws on her experience as an Indigenous person. She also dabbles in beadwork, leatherwork, and creating smudge fans. Perfect. Thank you, Megan, for that introduction. And now we're going to turn it over to Del Rey, uh, who is our guest today, our guest artist. Uh, Del Rey, welcome. Thanks, everybody. Well done. Oh, my God. And I'm just so happy to be here. And uh, so, and thank you so much, uh, Karen, for doing the land acknowledgement and to Michelle for the youth uh, recognition and your involvement. Um, also, I'd like to thank all the four youth councils in Toronto and Shabon for reaching out to me. Um, I'm very honored, uh, especially on Orange Shirt Day, honoring all the children that were taken and put into residential schools um, and day schools and today uh, they're called uh, foster care. So um, it's so important to share the true history of Canada's past. So um, thank you again for inviting me on the special day of remembering. Hi, hi. You're welcome. And we're so happy and I got you here. I just have to say, I love, is that your house? Cause it's really cool. It's like, I love your, it's really, really nice. I want to be there right now. It's very, <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, okay. Well, you know, I know that uh, people didn't log on today to see me. They came to see you. So I'm going to turn it over to your art, the main event, what you want to share with us today. Um, you said it's okay if we put our questions in the chat box, if we have any questions while you present? Absolutely. Okay, that's awesome. So over to you. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in with my first painting. And I'll bring it up closer so you can have a good look. So this is a 16 by 20 original painting of Kelsey Lightning. Um, it's a 16 by 20 inch painting, which uh, typically takes me about 40 to 50 hours to paint. Um, when I first started painting pointillism back in 2014, my dots were painted on with only one layer of dots. Now I paint using four to five layers of dots and it gives a really cool 3D effect. Um, it reminds me of beadwork on canvas, and if you've seen my beadwork, you will say, well, you better stick to painting because my beadwork does not look like this. <laughs> so, um, so Kelsey is a cousin of mine. She's from Maspachis, which is um, Cree for Bear Hills. 
and they are located in Treaty 6. And Kelsey is a traditional dancer. And I'm also a, a traditional dancer too. And we both share the similar reasons why we dance. And um, so just to explain this dance, um, first of all, the women's traditional dance is a dance of elegance and grace. Um, the movement is smooth and flowing. Uh, they dance to the beat of the drum, letting the long fringe on their sleeves sway in time. The dress itself, or also called regalia, uh, can consist of beadwork, quill work, bone or shells, and are quite heavy to wear. Um, the stats may look easy, but when you're dancing with leather, beads, and bone pipe breastplates, um, it can be quite the workout. Um, so yeah, so I painted Kelsey because um, when I saw her photograph, um, I knew I just had to paint that. And that's something I guess artists get when they see something beautiful or, or um, they just have this inspiration to paint. And um, she looked so proud and dignified and strong. Um, so when Kelsey was young, around eight years old, she danced at powwows and then she didn't dance for a long time but she was always going to powwows with her dad she always told him that she always um, felt like dancing when she heard uh, powwow music so he said well that just means you need to dance so he gifted her with uh, her with his late mom's traditional outfit um, the one you see here and she danced here and there, uh, but it was actually wasn't until eight years later that, and after her dad's passing, that she danced full time during the summers. Um, so Kelsey dances for her own healing from losing her dad, her dad, and she dances for her family. She also dances for those who can't dance, and she loves the fact that they are watching her to dance, and it, it uplifts them and makes them smile. So how could I not paint something as beautiful as that? So this one is called Kelsey Layton. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Thank you. So this painting, is called Surrounded by Medicine. This is a 12 by 16 painting. And I recently moved to the mountains in BC. And I am definitely affected by my surroundings. I see plants and flowers, trees, water, animals, birds, wildlife, the mountains, and a great big blue sky. I see the four seasons and the four directions. Each one of these elements are very powerful and to be respected. Uh, the flowers in this painting are called Indian paintbrush and um, just for my own interest, I'm currently taking photos of the various plant life in the different seasons here so that I can have them for reference for my future paintings. So this one's called Surrounded by Medicine. And the trees here, most of these trees are um, cedar trees and that's one of our medicines that we smudge with. Sorry, Delray, I have a question. Um, how long will it, would it take you to paint something like that? Um, for example, a 16 by 20 painting would take me about 40 to 50 hours. Wow. Okay. Uh, 11, probably about 30 hours. It really depends on how much detail I want in the painting. Wow, that's amazing. Using 
Thanks. So this one. So this painting is called Masqua, and uh, Masqua is Cree for bear. The original painting, this is actually a canvas print. Um, the original painting was 12 by 36. Um, and I paint a lot of bears. Um, bears in our culture are one of their, um, one of, they represent courage. Um, and as much as they are cute and cuddly, they are to be respected. Um, I paint bears because they are one of our, our uh, seven sacred animals and is also one of my spirit animals. Um, I'm learning a lot about bears uh, because I am in bear territory. I see black bears, brown bears, and grizzly bears. And this is called Masqua. Question to you, Delray. <laughs> I think everyone's like so intent because your paintings are so beautiful. But um, how do you get, like you said, spirit animal. How do you get a spirit animal? Like, w what do you mean by spirit? Well, animal? spirit, you see them a lot. Um, and I do see a lot of bears. Um, and you dream about them. And if you dream a lot about bears, then they're trying to send you a message in your dreams. And, and try and pay attention to those messages because it can be very important. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. Yeah, that is like, that's amazing. So you got a new dream. Oh, I have a question um, from Ashley, who's asking, what's the longest it's ever taken you to finish a painting? Thank you, oh Ashley. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, the biggest painting I've done um, was 30 by 40 inches. And that took me about, I would say, four to five months. Um, and that's not working every day on it. I typically like to paint first thing in the morning um, when the light is good. Um, or if I can't sleep at night, um, let's say I, I'll get up at one o'clock in the morning um, and I'll start painting till three, four in the morning. So it, it varies as to how much time I spend on a painting. But if it's like I really want to paint this painting and get it done, um, then I'll, I'll be painting every day for about, you know, four or five minutes or minutes, four or five hours and then take a break and then go back to it. Thank you. Okay, so the questions are starting to roll in, Delray. So I'll stagger them. Um, cause I know you have a lot of art to get through today. I'm just going to take one from Isabella now. who's asking, what was the first thing you painted, you ever painted? Oh my goodness. Well, I've been an artist since I was a child. Um, so I dabbled in artwork over the years in school. I excelled at art, um, in, in elementary school, high school. I did take, um, university level um art courses um throughout the years during my um working career in oil and gas um and i dabbled here and there but um i left the oil and gas industry in 2014 and i thought what am i going to do now and um did i want to go back to oil and gas did did I want to try a different industry as far as work and I picked up my brushes again and I started painting again that summer and um, the first painting that I painted with pointillism was um, an image of a horse standing on its hind legs and um, I just filled it up with thoughts and I didn't even know it was a style back then and that's like embarrassing to know but <laughs> but uh, I just I just love the effect that it had and that it's that painting had sold right away to a co-worker a friend of mine and then I painted another one and that image sold and then another one and I thought well geez I'm on a roll here so <laughs> I might as well keep at it 
and uh, and then it just happened that um, the following year I thought over the years that I had promoted um, Indigenous art culture traditions within the corporate environment I got to know many 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 Indigenous artisans and crafters and um, so I started um, representing other people's artwork in my gallery so I represented over 30 other Indigenous artisans and crafters in my gallery and um, um, yeah and as I I was on, on the verge of getting, I think, very recognized and acknowledged for my work. And, um, um, and then my husband got sick. So um, obviously I'm gonna look after my husband through his treatments and whatnot. Um, then I, I couldn't handle both operating a, a business as well as um, taking him to his appointments and whatnot. And um, so then uh, I made the decision to close my gallery and, uh, and concentrate on getting him back to health. Um, but he had, had passed away from cancer. And so the first year um, I basically floundered. Um, your, my identity changed, right? You're going from being married to, um, to being single again and and that just took uh, a long time for me to um to get back on my feet again and painting again and um so um my artwork um is part of who i am and um i really want to share the world with my my style and um yeah sorry that was a long answer <laughs> well thank you so much for your honesty and sharing that um with us delray you have a lot of um comments coming in from the chat uh sorry for your loss from angela you also have um just about your paintings it's um the youth love the paintings that you've shown so far so i know that we still have a question from angela but i'd like uh, you to if you'd like to continue to show your art and then we'll ask angela's question in a bit Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so this painting is actually this isn't the original. This is also a canvas print. Um, this one's eleven by fourteen. Here, I'll just show you. So this um, the original was a sixteen by twenty painting that was bought by a large oil and gas company out of Calgary. Um, and this is actually a painting of me and my regalia. Um, the picture was taken when I was performing in Didsbury, Alberta, uh, during their Alberta Culture Days celebrations. And the photographer was my good friend, Julie Gray. And this name of the painting is called Ancestors Footsteps. So if you've been to a powwow and see us dancing, um, you may be looking down as if we're following our ancestors footsteps. So this one's called Ancestors Footsteps. Beautiful. So this painting is called Motu. It's Cree for moth. And I try to name my, my, some of my paintings in Cree um, so that I can learn the Cree language and it also teaches others. Um, so this painting is a giant emperor moth. And when I saw its picture, I immediately saw the eagle images in his wings and I just had to paint him. So I'll just show you here. 
right here. And these blue markings here remind me of deer hooves. <laughs> nice. So that's it for my paintings. I do have more, but um, do you have any more questions? I, I think we do. There's like thunder in my background. So I hope you don't, if you don't hear the thunder, it's thundering out where I am. Um, I think we're like all pretty impressed right now and speechless at all your beautiful paintings. I'm going to ask um, Angela's question back here, which was, one second, if I can get to it. Her question was, do you have a specific spot you most like to paint in? Um, in my easy chair. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I don't have a studio um, right now. I'm currently in the process of building a house. Um, and I will have a proper studio with lots of lighting. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, right now, um, um, I'm in this cabin and it's beautiful. Um, when there is daylight, I, I paint um, just in the living room for now. And, um, um, or if it's a nice day, I paint outside. Um, I had a tent set up, it's too cool now, but um, I did have a tent set up outside where I was painting outside in the nature. And it's just, just very calming and relaxing for me to, to do that, so. That's awesome. Um, Kat has a question. She says, what usually inspires you to start a new painting? It takes me quite a while, actually. Um, um, I think about it, like, like as, I, as I'm painting one painting, I'm already thinking about the next painting, what I want to do. And um, so... If I see a dancer in the regalia, um, I'll ask them if I can paint them. Um, sometimes I get a yes, sometimes I get a no, or um, no response, but that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, I really, I really have to think about it, and I really have to be inspired to do that painting. Otherwise, if I'm not, then, then it's not, I can, I don't know how to explain it, but you can feel it. Right? It's a feeling that you get, and um, um, if I if I'm truly excited about a painting, which I am in all of these, <laughs> I just want to get them done. And 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 I also like uh, showing my uh, friends and family the progress in my paintings from the beginning to um, um, as it's in progress, so they can see the difference um, how far I come to uh, finishing the painting. Great, that sounds good. We just, we have a few more questions too here, if you don't mind. So um, some similar questions. So Julie asked, do you ever listen to anything while you paint? And has music been an inspiration to you when painting? Absolutely. Um, sometimes I listen to um, just plain old country music. I grew up on country music, so I listen to country music. Um, sometimes I listen to powwow music. Um, um, and sometimes I just like listening to flute music because it's so calming and um, relaxing to listen to that kind of music too. So yeah, definitely music is a big part of my work and how I present it for sure. <laughs> Great. Uh, you, you're obviously intriguing the youth here because the questions keep flooding in, right? They, <laughs> they're very interested. So that's awesome. Um, okay, I'll get to some others. So um, do you have a favorite painting or piece of work that you've done? Oh my god, I've got so many. Um, oh. I, I just have so many like like I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I know I've got some paintings I really don't care for, <laughs> but uh, um, 
Yeah, I, I, that's a hard question because I do have a lot of paintings that I that I love, and I'm always sad to see them go. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like all your babies, right? They, you know, so you create into them. So, so that's awesome. Um, I think piggybacking on the question we asked before, do you play any musical instruments? You like to listen to music. Do you play any instruments? Well, uh, believe it or not, I have a lot of instruments, but I don't play any of them. I, when I get more spare time, like I do want to learn how to play the guitar, uh, piano. Um, I, I bought a Native American flute that I want to learn how to play. Um, I have hand drums. Um, I like to think I, I can sing, but uh, people who've heard me <laughs> say don't sing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I, I love music. Oh, I thought because we were going to like, you know, call you in for a singing demonstration too the next time. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, well. <laughs> No? Okay, no, that's not for you? Okay, we won't do that then. Um, I know that you wanted to um, talk to us a little bit more about pointillism, so I'll just ask the last uh, question for now. So this question is from Nishita, and she says, um, do you ever struggle to think of what to paint? Absolutely, I do. Um, um, if I'm in that mode, then I do something else creative. Um, I also do uh, beadwork. Um, I read a lot. Um, I make smudge fans. So I alternate. If I can't think of anything that, that I want to paint or, or have the inspiration to paint, then I'll, I'll switch my focus onto something else uh, creative. And, um, and I'll do like six smudge fans and then um, hopefully through that process um, something might click in me and I'll think of a, a subject or whatever and or I might see something um, so for example um, I do a lot of smudge fans using turkey feathers uh, pheasant feathers um, grouse feathers and um, there was this one feather just sitting there and it was so beautiful and intricate. Flowers and feathers I just absolutely love because they're so um, beautiful in their own way. Um, you see the different lines and the colors and how it flows. So my next painting possibly um, will be, uh, there is this moth that keeps flying around. They're brown in color, golds black um, and I'm going to count combine that with this feather that I saw and um, I don't know like I have the vision in my head but um, I, I now have to get it back out onto canvas so that possibly could be my next painting so sounds good um, okay I I'm really interested in pointillism. I, I'm not sure, like, um, can you explain a little bit more about what that is? Absolutely. So um, this is my style of pointillism. Um, true pointillism is a painting that's completely covered with thoughts. And um, what I do for my paintings is I paint my subject first. So I lay down all the colors, the image of the painting first, and then I basically go crazy with thoughts. So, um, so I use a tool called a stylus. It's a wooden dowel with a metal bar with a, a ball on the end, and they come in different sizes. And you can get these from Michaels. I like using them because I find um, paintbrushes um, can get very sloppy and goopy. So um, these give me more control. And um, coming from a realist background, painting um, objects that appear real, 
um, and now doing pointillism, I'm finding my technique is getting more detailed. And uh, so yeah, so I use a, a stylus, but you can use a, a Q-tip or, or a tip of a pencil, um, or even those wood skewers that you use for shish kebabs, anything with a point you can use for, for a tool. So I use acrylic paint. I have hundreds of these. <laughs> and um, I mix it with water uh, to create a smooth yogurt consistency. So I've gone ahead and, where is it? Right here. I've mixed up my paint. And so I load up, I load up my, stylus so there's a nice little tip on the end of, of the stylus and then I basically start the um, dotting process So here's a painting I started, and we're just going to concentrate on the flowers here. And I get my stylus in red. So I'm going to uh, basically start dotting. So the motion is, is like a sewing machine. You go up and down, up and down, every three to four dots. And then you'll notice your dots starting to get smaller. That's when you need to reload your stylus with paint. So in this painting, um, I started with white paint and I painted dots around these flowers. But you can go inside your object too. And um, you can dot outside the lines, uh, in the lines. You can dot using different shades. Um, you can dot light colors onto dark colors or dark colors onto light colors uh, to give it more depth. You can blend the dots into other different colored dots too um, to, to also give it more depth um, and also to give that 3D effect. Um, to me, there's no rules with pointillism as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's very meditating, it's relaxing, and what I love about it is that anybody can do it, um, even with hardly any art skills. And I love teaching those people because um, they're the ones that come up with the most beautiful paintings after I've done a session with them. So um, the other thing I love about pointillism, it really does slow the thought process down. Um, it makes you think about things more thoroughly. Um, it can actually help with anxiety. And um, like I said, it, 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 um, anybody can do pointillism. So um, Sometimes um, I might have a plan as to what I want uh, my painting to look like. Other times I'm just dotting away and something else happens to the painting and it turns out completely different than what I imagined. That happens a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I love to use bright, vivid colors in my paintings. Um, I have a story. I remember my mom, uh, when she was alive she was in her 60s and she was slowly losing her eyesight and by the time she was in her mid-70s she could only see out of the corner of her eye and one day she was describing a dream to me and she was happy to say that that it was in full color and i think that's why i need to paint in these bright colors and it's my way of honoring her um, so as I mentioned before, a 16 by 20 painting can take me up to 40 to 50 hours to paint. And as you can see here, I still have a lot of work to do on this painting. So that's my demo. 
That's amazing. Um, so there are a few other questions for pointillism. I'm just wondering, uh, would you ever be willing maybe in the future to do a pointillism workshop with us so we could try? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I think I'd be really <laughs> excited to do that. Um, okay, I'll get to some of these other questions um, before I turn it over to the youth to ask you some questions, but this has been so exciting and so awesome. I love it. Um, okay, so Isabella asked, did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Well, like I said, I've always um, been an artist since grade school. Um, I excelled in art. Um, for If you had asked me I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago, before I left the oil and gas industry, that I was going to be a full-time artist owning an art gallery, I would have said, yeah, right. You know, I just, that wasn't, that wasn't even an, an option for me because I had a good job and I've always had a good job in my, my work career. So, um, um, I'm so happy that, that um, circumstances led me to being a full-time artist. So, yeah. Amazing, thank you. Um, from Kat, uh, we have not exactly related to art, but you mentioned shish kebabs. What's your favorite meal? Oh, <laughs> eat. <laughs> Since COVID started, I've gained about 20 pounds. <laughs> No, but, um, and I've been cooking a lot more at home. So I've been trying different recipes. Um, we're about an hour away from the nearest town. So we really got to plan our meals and stock up on, on food here. Um, we're basically living off grid here. So um, cooking and um, just getting ready for the day is much more of an effort. I got to boil my water for a shower. Um, but as getting back to the question about food, um, I love Mexican food. Um, I, well, I love all, all food, I, especially if I don't have to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest part when somebody cooks for you. Oh yeah. my gosh, awesome. Um, okay, one more question, and then I'm going to turn it over to the youth. So this one's from Julia. I think it kind of is a bit similar to what we were asking before, but I'll ask it again. Um, so when, where do you feel the most creative and inspired? So I think you asked the where, but how about the when? Like, is there a time of day you feel most creative? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, in the morning, first thing in the morning. Um, I get up, I make my coffee, I stoke the fireplace, um, and I, I just sit down and I start painting. And I can, I can literally paint all day, right? I take a few breaks, have a bite to eat, and go back to painting. So I really have to be mindful of, I have a dog, I need to take for a walk. <laughs> There's other responsibilities. Um, and like I said, uh, the nearest town is an hour away. So that's a full time uh, day for me to go out and do my groceries and laundry and stuff like that. So um, I typically do love to paint first thing in the morning. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so enough of me asking questions. I'm going to turn it over, I think, to Irini, who has a question for you. Hi, Irini. Um, it's orange shirt, shirt day today. Oh, can you tell us about an art piece you're thinking about doing to recognize the children who are taking to residential schools? Good question, Irini. So yes, um, so this painting here is a piece of artwork I began because of you. <laughs> um, you asked me to describe a painting that references truth and reconciliation and Orange Shirt Day. So I had to think long and hard about that. 
Um, I currently paint what I see in my surroundings and I love painting wildlife, horses, bugs, flowers, dancers in the regalia. And um, to paint something that represents over a hundred years of genocide was a huge undertaking for me. Um, my mom went to residential school and she didn't have the same horrible experience that others experienced but she saw everything going on with her friends and family and I can only imagine how difficult it was for her to witness this. So um, to explain this painting, here goes. So um, as you know, my painting style is pointillism. Fancy word for dots. So I equated the dots to the statistics and the amount of how many children that were taken from families into residential school. Um, approximately 3,200 children had died in these institutions. Um, approximately 6,000 children are in unmarked graves and not found and approximately 150,000 children were taken from their homes. So to date, I have painted 3,596 dots, and this is what the painting looks like now. I don't know if you can see the dots. Okay. So I painted flowers on the bottom of the canvas. Right here. Each flower is so intricate, delicate, and beautiful in their own way. So, and each child was innocent and in their element of relating to Mother Earth. So I started off using white paint that amounted to 706 dots. The color white represents purity and innocence and these children were innocent um, and the next color that i used was blue blue is this color of the sky and the sea and blue represents many things but some of the elements are truth faith wisdom and loyalty and there are currently 2890 dots so the dot, or sorry, the children are standing in front of the cross that is painted in red. So here's the cross. There are residential uh, school survivors who, whose faith is in the Jesus name. And I do not want to disrespect them whatsoever. However, it was the people who represented Jesus Christ in all its failure to kill the Indian and the child. So the blood, or the red, is the blood on their hands. The cross is wrapped in white ribbon that will contain numbers associated with how many children were taken and died. The dark sky is illuminated, illuminated, illuminated with the northern lights. It's probably hard to see, but um, background here are the northern lights. Um, there are many indigenous cultures that believe that the northern lights are, are our ancestors. And I believe the children are now the northern lights and stars. So I'll be painting all these colors, all these flowers will be connected through the children and their spirits will be rising all in color, uh, blended into a Northern Light scene. Um, so when I do my next dot, which will be 2,891, 
um, a lot of questions go through my mind. And when I do that dot, who was this child? Where was he or she from? Who were her, his or her parents? Did she have a brother or sister in the same institution? Were they separated? All of these questions come to mind when painting this, as most of these questions to this day is unanswered. So I will continue to paint to 6,000 dots for the children that were, uh, their graves were unmarked and not found. And that's the approximate number. At that point, I will post my picture or my painting on my social media news feed. And then I'll continue until I reach 150,000 dots. For every child taken from their families who were abused, beaten, and tortured for simply speaking their language. I have yet to name this piece. And um, so that's going to take a long time to me, for me uh, personally to figure that out, to make it meaningful and, um, yeah, just to make it meaningful. So yeah, that's my, my response to your inquiry question. Thank you. Wow. Um, before I move on, I just, I don't even really know what to say. Um, that was really powerful. You actually got me almost tearing up and I don't tear up easy. So that's really powerful. So thank you for sharing that. Okay. I'm going to stop. Um, can we go on to the next question, please? I think it's Sonoli. Sorry. Um, sorry, what do you mean by... Oh. It's okay. Um, I just sent it in the agenda, but um, if you don't have it, it's okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't see it. That's no problem. It's just question number two. Um, and then it's okay. I can just ask it for you. Okay. No problem. So, uh, Delray, what do you hope to do or have you done with the paintings? Well, you've you've asked, answered some of this, but. Um, so for example, uh, selling your art, if we wanted to, if people wanted to get more information about your artwork and, and how to get some of these prints, um, is there a way they can contact you perhaps? Um, yeah, that's just, that's the question. <laughs> Sorry, Sonoli. So um, as far as um, what I hope to do with my paintings, um, well, first of all, I guess my, my hopes are to basically sustain myself as an artist, um, to help keep a roof over my head, put food on the table, clothe myself, and to purchase more supplies to continue my art. Um, so this is done by selling my paintings, prints, and greeting cards. And um, here's a sample of a, a greeting card. And it's blank inside, my logo on the back. Um, so yeah, so I go to markets, art shows. Um, I also teach my style. Um, I go to people's homes, businesses, or schools. But sadly, with COVID, um, that's been really, really slow. I'm actually hosting a class tomorrow, a one-on-one -on -one class. Um, so I had to figure out all the COVID rules and regulations as far as um, bringing somebody into uh, my home. Um, and secondly, I just hope that my pa paintings resonate with people, um, not only to teach them about our Indigenous culture, but um, simply to put a smile on their face, really. Um, 
And I just uh, currently designing my artwork um, onto clothes and stationery and home decor products on Art of Wear and Redbubble. Um, so that's been really exciting and fun for me to see my art on clothes. Um, however, my overall dream is to reopen Delray's Native Art Gallery um, and to continue hosting not only my pointillism classes but also hosting cultural retreats with other Indigenous knowledge keepers to teach about our culture and the beauty of the nature here. It's so beautiful. Um, so that's my goal. Um, I'm hoping I'll be open next spring. Amazing. And is it okay for me to um, pass on your contact information if people want to get in touch with you about your art or maybe how they can purchase some of your prints today? And Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so um, people can share my journey on Facebook under Delray's Native Art Gallery. Um, I also post on Instagram and LinkedIn. I don't have a website yet, but I'm working on it. Delray, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Delray underscore Dumont. It's Angela Belgard here. I saw the uh, clothing. <laughs> It's beautiful. Oh. You're absolutely beautiful. I was so excited to see the hummingbird. Yeah. Beautiful. I love hummingbirds. I paint them. Yeah. I love painting hummingbirds. Um, I get a lot of ladies saying that they remind them of, of uh, their mothers. So in honor of all the mothers, I like to paint hummingbirds. My 11-year-old uh, daughter saw her first hummingbird last Saturday in my backyard. Uh, yeah, and in uh, it, hummingbirds are a symbol uh, in our family is a symbol of uh, my father who passed away about 15 years mm -hmm. ago. So my niece has a hummingbird tattoo, and my uh, um, sister has a hummingbird tattoo. I just went with a daisy tattoo. <laughs> I wasn't wasn't up for the hummingbird, so I wear hummingbirds all the time. But your um your art is absolutely stunning beautiful thank you so much thank for sharing thank you so much thanks thanks so much delray um i'm going to hand it over to sonoli for the closing yeah okay um so yeah first of all we all want to thank delray for doing the workshop with us and just if you want to say something just to close quickly if there's anything else Okay. Yeah, I just want to say uh, to each one of you, um, you should be so very proud of yourselves. Um, I love the fact that you're learning about Canada's true history and you're making an effort in your calls to action. Um, just one suggestion, uh, maybe you do already, just is to bring an elder into your circle. Um, learn as much as you can because we need this understanding so much so thank you and hi hi thank you for bringing me to you yeah yeah thank you again yeah really it means a lot to us because oh, we love being able to learn about truth and reconciliation and we also want to thank everyone else for coming to our workshop today and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something and we might have more like this in the future and our Thursday Creative Spaces group has another Indigenous Artist Showcase on October the 22nd. And there will also be a knowledge keeper, Valerie King, from the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations, who will be coming to our Halton Youth Initiative on November 5th. Um, for more information on these upcoming events, please contact the HYI project coordinator at Siobhan at ourkidsnetwork.ca and Megwitch and thank you for coming and the workshop's over and you're free to leave the meeting now. <laughs>